looks pretty good. Welcome, welcome. Happy 4th of July, or soon to be. We've got some pups to train, so we thought we'd bring you along for the ride. We'll definitely wait for some more people to join us. Um, first things first, can you all hear me? We're trying a brand new microphone. I want to see if uh, we'll come in and clear. We got Mr. Bruno in the back getting it to fall off the table. So Nobody type too fast. Bark, bark. Yeah. Can you hear us okay? New microphone. Well, we'll just make an assumption they can hear us. Yeah, perfect. Making New mic, so got to work with it. All right, we got Mr. Bruno. How old's Mr. Bruno? About, about a year? Uh, no, I think he's seven months, six months. Seven that months. young? No. Nah, no, he's, he's young. He's been a little older than that. Look at him. He's feeling lazy today, so we'll see if he performs for you. I think I've just thrown off by how big he is, you know? He's a big boy. He's got he's, big paws. Yeah, big boy. Just look at you stealing. You see him stealing there? Call the police. Got his ears taped up, which is exactly what we need to fix his. Uh, you know, he's got a goob from Z on his, on oh, his is thing. That's what it was. It's all goob there. Oh, I thought that was like from him rolling around uh, in the grass. Yeah. So we're not sure we're gonna work today with Mr. Bruno. Um, down. He needs some help with his uh, distance control. That means getting him to sit and down from uh, a distance. Sit. Yes. Maybe some leash pressure, but I think we're gonna fix that. Um. Uh, down so nice nice verbals in fact that's a really clean uh, down stand yes good job buddy sit well we got austin is wanting us uh, some more dr cole content <laughs> well go it's not too late bro put your uh put your uh put my scrubs on put your scrubs on and get I, official dr cole is clocked stand. out at this point the veterinarian clinic is closed oh okay sit Good boy. Using a, a lot of leash pressure here to clean everything up. We just launched our brand new leashed course. It's a 100% leash pressure course. Um, complete on leash obedience. How to use the leash to get your dog to just fly into different positions, as you're seeing here. Butter, butter soft pressure is what we call it. Fingertip pressure. So your two-year-old can, you can forget it's old. <laughs> Garrett, where do they go for uh, learning to use clicker training or how to do clicker training? So we dive deep in on clicker training or marker training in all of our courses, really, in all of our courses. Uh, but the one that relies on it heavily is Obedience 101. That's how we use food lures and markers, verbal or clickers, to, to get uh, really fancy obedience, really nice uh, obedience. Uh, using food lures, markers, but I think every course uh, pretty much covers marker training in some form or fashion. Unleashed dives in deep. The leash pressure course dives in deep. Yeah, it's essential. Down. Down. Good boy. Yeah. So we're gonna get some duration in that in that down now. Clean it up. Be a little confused. Well, that boy is super food motivated today. Down. Yes. Try that again. Oh. Sit. Yes. Well, it's got some speed there, baby. Woo. He's like, what's up? <laughs> Watch. Boy, yeah. Down. So really Someone just working him in the rhythm. Back foot. <laughs> what? Someone wants to see him do a back foot. Down. Nah, he can't do that. He'll hurt himself. All right. So just working. Sit. Killer. Killer when I'm a foot away. Two foot away. Down. Maybe not killer. Down. A little relying on the hand command there, which is weird. He's like backpedaling. But we're going to start going further away and clean it all up anyways. See, if I'm close, sit. It's, it's, it's fine. It's delicious. But when we start di dif drifting away, 
one foot, two foot away, three feet away, gets ugly. Down. Yeah, need some help with those. Let's go clean those up. Stand. Good. Good boy. Down. Just going to try a duration down. Stay. Good down. Stay. Good boy. Good boy, Bubba. So, again, for those of you just joining us, just having a good time out here. It's not too hot out. Kind of have a rain cloud coming. It may or may not hit us, but it's not 105 degrees like it's been lately, and it's not raining. So, we got a chance to, to get out here and train uh, without dying too much. And so, we thought we'd share the moment with you. Happy Fourth of July coming up for everybody. Hope you all are having a great time, and I'll throw out this tip for you. You got pups at home. If they don't like fireworks, which many, many dogs do not, I would suggest you keep them in a room with the door shut, blinds drawn, crank the TV or the music up pretty loud, and then the bonus, cotton balls. Put cotton balls in your dog's ears. Uh, not too deep where you can't get them out and not too shallow where they just fall out and they eat them. They got to be shoved down there pretty good. And um, that's what we use for our police dogs to keep them from, you know, uh, when we're do getting them immune to gunfire, but it works for fireworks too. So definitely try that out. Now, if you have a puppy who's never seen fireworks yet and you don't want them to become scared of fireworks, listen to Uncle Garrett. Do not take your puppy to a fireworks show and do not bring your puppy out front and let them just be absolutely overloaded and bombarded with crazy fireworks. They're gonna literally shit themselves and be afraid of fireworks for the rest of their lives if you do it wrong. And the chance of you doing it wrong, very high because you can't control what the neighbors are doing and they might be setting off mortars in your backyard. You know how that goes, depending upon where you're from. Sometimes people are bringing out those crazy fireworks. You don't know when they're gonna pop off. And if it's too big, if it's too loud, if it's too bright, your dog's gonna think it's a freaking alien invasion. It's Independence Day and uh, they're not gonna have a good experience. Remember, they don't understand it's a holiday. They don't understand it's Independence Day. They don't know what a firework is. So let's be, you know, very careful with that. Even with the puppy, my suggestion is let them just enjoy the fireworks from inside, feed them from the inside. And if you have some prep work tonight, you can actually put some firework sounds on your TV. You know, ask uh, Alexa or YouTube or whatever to play some firework sounds for you and start low, then start slowly start to get that volume up and they won't think, too much about it tomorrow will just be more of the same but it'll, it will be a lot more of a better way to ease them into it so enough yap in there let's get my boy to do down good boy you gotta clean those up bubba 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 let's get those cleaned up <laughs> ready to heal maybe we'll do something different i'm bored with that too do we have the touchpad out here i do let's play with that some she was doing good. Let me move this. So y'all have any questions, I'll try to answer them, but. Uh, there's a lot coming in, but. Yeah, I can't answer all of them, but we'll answer what we can. That's for sure. Especially if it's related to any of the training that we're actually doing, any question about the dog, any question about our courses, any question about what color underwear Cole is wearing, any of that is fine. <laughs> Did you hear that? No. You didn't hear what I said? <laughs> I said, I said, all questions are fine. Uh, if it has to do with what we're doing, our courses, the dog, or your underwear color, good to go. He still didn't hear me. Cole ain't paying attention. Well, I'm, you can't read and listen at the same time, can you? No, I can't. I'm trying Jesus. to cycle through all these comments. Y'all ask him since he's not paying attention to what I'm saying. Go ahead and ask him what color Cole. Uh, someone's guessing navy blue. Navy Actually, blue underwear. Me... <laughs> Show them what you're working with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Finish. They're on it? <laughs> They're, you, they you got know. it? You got it. Navy blue. <laughs> you got it. Uh, so we're going to answer navy blue's question. You got a qu question? Whoever answered that Cole's underwear are navy blue uh, can ask whatever question they want. Look at this rotation, baby. Show me what you're working with. Heel. How many dogs have you trained? That's a, a good question. Yes. If you had to ballpark it. Oh, it's hard to say, man, because if we're talking civilian dogs, um, hundreds, hundreds and hundreds, uh, less than a thousand probably, but police dogs, it's hard to say, man. 
a lot. I don't have an answer. I didn't like keep track, but in the thousands. Someone guessed 800 ish. So they're pretty close. Could be, could be. Did uh, Navy Blue have a question or that was his question? Uh, Chelsea was the one who guessed Navy Blue and uh, she was correct. Yes. What I should be asking is how Chelsea knew you had Navy Blue underwear now. I don't know. That's what I want to know. That's a great know. question. Good boy, huh? That's it, Bubba. You're doing so good. In it to win it. The mosquito gets you. Get him. Get that bad skeeter. Bugs out here. Not, not playing around, man. Ooh, this is a good one. Are neutered dogs easier to train? No. I don't find a difference between a dog being neutered or not neutered, making a difference on, on how they train or not. Um, it's too tight. You can ask uh, a question yes, while I'm getting this We fixed. have trained a giant uh, schnauzer before. Yes, we have. Oh, Chelsea's just saying I'm predictable. That's Predictable? Yeah, most guys are predictable. With their well, let's figure out what color underwear I'm wearing while we're at it. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what color underwear I'm wearing tomorrow. Red, white, and blue, baby. With an eagle right on the front. And you think I'm joking. We literally have those underwear ready to rock. Come on, big boy. Uh, for using yes. an e-collar for obedience, uh, I recommend you check out our Unleashed course. It goes over all the steps that you need to uh, use it correctly. Good boy, buddy. Yes. Cole, help me out. Yeah. I want to do some uh, focus drills. So maybe stand uh, up there a little bit. Right there is good. See if you can get him to look at you. Perfect. Just play with that a little bit. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Find a an item, there's a basketball up there. Oh, yeah. Bad rep. My bad. <laughs> Getting confused. Let me reset. Just doing some some focus drills with him. Cole's job is to distract the dog. My job is to get Mr. Bruno to look up at me <clears throat> when he's not choking. Just toss it up and down. Perfect. Find something else. More sounds, too. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Chef, Chef Cole, get him to look at you. It's getting a little cooked too. Come on, Bubba, figure it out. Good, yeah. Hold that for a second. Good. I'm ready and uh let's try it now just slightly. Good. A little more. Too much e collar on those downs. Uh oh, dropped one. Come on, buddy. Yes. Yes. Very nice rep. He's almost done. He's a little cooked. So. Good boy, yeah, he's just putting himself in a down now. <clears throat> Sit. Yes. Good boy. That's what I want to see, Bubba. Good boy, huh? 
Oh, that's very pretty. Very pretty. Uh, someone said, I have a three-month-old Kane Corso. He absolutely hates the prong collar when I try walking him, gets aggressive. Any advice? Yeah. So you got to introduce the prong collar correctly. Otherwise, it's likely to get that kind of reaction. Um, we show you how to do that in uh, both our perfect walk course, but even better is our leashed leash course that just came out. It shows you how to uh, teach your dog uh, to not just understand, but actually like prong collar pressure, uh, slip lead pressure, flat collar pressure, any type of leash pressure that, that you want to put on the pup. Um, otherwise, you're going to have that disastrous effect. And with a Cane Corso, you know, you and I both know dog's going to be 120 plus pounds. We need that dog to be feather light on the leash with anyone that holds it. And that leashed course, it's a leashed, complete on leash obedience, just dropped Monday, Tuesday, uh, Saturday. Saturday, Saturday. Saturday. That's right. My days are a little mixed up, but um, I'm super happy with it. It's like 72 lessons, 10 and a half hours, bringing it. Already getting amazing reviews. Look how tired my boy is. He's yeah. looking at him. He's like, just drop it in my mouth. <laughs> We've been overworking him a little bit, so come on up, Bubba. Uh, for training tips on a GSP, I recommend you check out DIYK9.com where you can uh, go through all of our courses and uh, start getting on the right track. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Yes. So uh, thank you, Devin. Uh, how does one get into training dogs for police departments? Do most of them use e-collar, as I'm quite confident with uh, Dogtra and educators? Yeah, pretty much every police department uses e-collars. Not most of them know how to use them correctly. Trust me when I tell you that. Uh, most do not. They use it more old school, like a hammer, uh, which it, it has some benefits in that aspect. But uh, in fact, I'll just bring up an example of a, a good friend of mine works for a, a large agency in Florida, uh, dog there, hard ass Malinois, high speed, low drag, dog has plenty of street bites, probably 50 street bites. I, I don't know, the dog's like four or five years old, six years old, uh, it doesn't matter, but the problem is the dog had a horrible out, let go, will not let go when you tell it to let go. That's not good. By the way, that's a very common problem in police dog world. Um, we're bringing on another dog, by the way, so don't worry. For those of you who wanna see puppies, we got one coming. Um, Anyways, that's because net, so let me let me tell you what happened. So they said, Oh, the dog will not let go. So let me slap an e-collar on it and fry it. You know, it's an old school uh solution to a problem. And um, sometimes that works. In this case, it did not work, it made the problem worse. Uh, the dog learned that e-collar means bite harder and don't let go. And so that was a big problem. And so when they would tell the dog to let go, the dog would not let go, they hit him hard on the e-collar. The dog would just dig in deeper on the bite and not let go, not let go. Got so bad that now they condition that when they say to let go, the dog's anticipating e-collar. He's anticipating the fight. So he just bites harder and harder and harder. So you would just say out and he would go. Arr! So a lot of conflict there, a lot of confusion. So I had to get on uh, multiple calls with the trainer and uh, who happens to be a friend of mine. And uh, we coached him through the process and reconditioned the dog in about two or three weeks. That boy is letting go with, with fire and enthusiasm, super solid, with and without the e-collar, uh, taught him how to out properly. Uh, took, took, because it has been going wrong so long, it took many more uh, reps than it, we would have just started with a clean slate. We could have had it figured out in like two or three days. Instead, we had to do probably two or three weeks of training, you know, a couple times a day for a few weeks, for four or five days every week. Anyways, long story short, that dog has a badass out now. And yes, they do use uh, um, e-collars a lot in police work. And then let me add, answer this question here. Do most of them use e-collar? Yes. So how do you get into training dogs for police departments? You pretty much have to be in the industry, man. You have to have, to have not always, let me rephrase that. But you, they want to know who you are. A lot of police departments and police canine handlers are very untrusting of who they learn from. And so they want to learn from those who are in the industry, but not always. There are some civilians that are able to break into the police canine training world, uh, but they have to, you know, be able to, first off, you're going to need an in. What's the in? Someone maybe who's in the industry like myself or, or uh, anyone who's, who's on those training circuits. There's training circuits out there for police departments. And um, what do we need to work on with him right now? Off the top of your head? Cole? Um, a little bit of everything? A little bit of everything. You can work on, on focus, duration. Boy, buddy. Um, we'll work on it all. You could but good question. There's another well. question there. There's one up above that, I think. 
I'm getting flooded with questions. Uh, that one. Read it out loud. Uh, when I work with my dog on the touch pad, he doesn't move his butt. His head will follow my hand lure, but ne uh, never rotate. What can I do here? Ah, okay, baby. We got you. We got you. Who's, th who's that? Uh, this is Lou Mullet. Lou, we're going to answer your question. To repeat, dog does not rotate. We can get the head to rotate. Let me show you what that looks like. Let me see if I can, actually. Head's rotating. Head's rotating. That's all wonderful. Some dogs don't know how to follow uh, that. So what I would suggest, you go a step back and you do this technique. Use your body. Use your hand right here with food, yeah? And then crowd them. Crowd them. Crowd them. So we're ass backwards right now. That's not what I would call a heel, right? This is not a heel, but it's the beginning of rotations. You just push into them, right? Just use your spatial pressure. That really helps steer them. I, I, I'm pretty confident that that's going to work for you. If it doesn't, you know, put your, if they're sitting, put your feet under them a little bit. Let me show you what that looks like. Let me get him where I want him. Get him into a sit, potentially. We don't really like them to sit when they're on the touchpad for this exact reason. But I'm going to just kind of put my feet under them, you know, gently. You just get your feet under them to get their butt up and then just walk into them. And those rotations will begin and pair that rotation with pair your body moving into them with the hand. The hand steers the body, right? Just kind of stack it. Hand equals my feet will push you anyway. So just follow the hand. Good question. Next question. Uh, looking to adopt a second pit bull. Any advice? Does the sex age um, of the second dog matter? If he wants to adopt a second dog. Yeah, I guess. There's a lot of variables there. Um, chances are a male and a female is going to be a better combo than potentially a male and a male and a female and a female. It's not a hard rule, but you can have an alpha male and an alpha female in the same room. You can't have two alpha males in the same room. You can have some issues there. So that's one thing to think about. And then age. All I care about on age is that the first dog is at least two years of age is my preference. I can't stand when people get two puppies at the same time. It's, it's just not smart. Really not smart. And the reason for it is uh, litter mate syndrome and just the stress of, of trying to raise two dogs. It's not twice as hard. It's four times as hard. And so we really prefer that the first dog's already settled in, fully mature, fully trained. And then you can, um, you can think about it. That's my suggestion anyways. Good question. All right, let's work with my boy here. Yeah. Too tight again. What's up, uh, fluffy puppy? You do have two other questions that came in. Sure. Uh, I have a four year old AM staff tips on leash pulling. Easy peasy, baby. Four year old. Four year old? Four year old. Oh, yeah. I got the one and only solution for you, my friend. Check out our online course called The Perfect Walk. It's available in our monthly membership. It's $20. $20. Make you a holler. It, got, it has a ton of other benefits too. But that Perfect Walk course will teach any dog of any age, of any breed, how to walk perfectly on a leash in as little as 5 to 10 or 15 minutes if you really suck. 15 minutes. Um, and if anybody in this um, group right here has taken it, let them know uh, what you thought of that perfect, the perfect walk course. It's a killer course. But it's going to require, I'll give you some tips, especially a four-year-old Amstaff. A prong collar will help significantly, but not just the tool. It's how you use it. It's how you use that tool. Going to need the proper tool, preferably the proper leash. Good boy, buddy. Let me see how you look on this. Free. The technique, and, and again, you got to know how to put the tool on the right way. Let me see how you do with that, my friend. Uh, you got another question. Five-month-old golden retriever shuts down after getting any correction. Uh, no food or play drive. What should I do? Well, you need to build up that food drive for sure. It's got to be built up so high that even if you come in with a little pressure – they say, you know what? It's a little bit of pressure, but I'm willing to stick through it because I'm in it to win it for the food. That's number one. That's all taught in our Obedience 101 course. We can give you some tips right now in a second. But it's potential that um, the corrections, they're not corrections with directions. That's taught in our leashed course. The leashed course shows you 
Uh, in fact, let me just show you because I want to switch to something else anyways. Can you hold him for a sec? Let's switch this over. I'm going to show you right now the beauty of proper leash pressure training so that you can deliver a correction with direction. My guess would be, my guess would be, can you help up with your bubba? Up, up. Good job. Um, if you deliver a correction that the dog does not understand, let, what's, what is that? What do you mean, Garrett? Just give me a dog. Two years old, doesn't know leash pressure. I put a leash on it, a leash and prong collar, a leash and flat collar, it doesn't matter. And I pop the leash. I pop them. They don't know what is going on. I'm gonna, what's the human equivalent of that? You and me are walking down the street and you are looking at something, walking. Maybe you're on the phone and you're also eating chips. You're looking at something, you're on the phone talking to someone and you're eating chips. Out of nowhere, I smack you in the back of the head. I don't say anything. I yell at you in a foreign language and you're like, I don't know what the hell's going on. Was it because I was eating chips? Was it because I was on the phone? Was it because I was looking at something? There's no way for me to communicate to that, that to you because you don't speak the language I speak. It's the same with the dog. If I just come in with the language he doesn't understand, whether it's a verbal or leash, and I just smack him with the leash or pop him on the leash, they're like, I don't know why that happened. I don't know where that pressure came from. I don't know how to turn it off or avoid it in the future. And so instead what you do you have to teach them leash pressure, right? So that the dog understands that if I apply some pressure, you just go with the pressure. You don't fight it. So I'm going to give this uh, pup right here a correction. Oh, boy. His name's Macaroni, by the way. Help me out. 10, 11, 12? Eight months. I'm always so high on these, huh? He's think, eight. Maybe nine now. I think you're the confused one. No, I'm pretty He's sure. I... Regardless, Golden Retriever, here comes his correction. Ready? He went into a down because we've prepped him for that. I gave him a level two pop, right? Mind you, I didn't give him the, uh, the command because he would just do the command, but we're communicating to him in a language he understands because we taught him it. So if I pop him down, he goes down. If I pop him up, he goes into a, into a sit, et cetera, et cetera. You have to teach them how to respond to that, all covered in the leash pressure course. Uh, it's called leashed. We go very deep in on it. No, you don't just put the leash on and just start popping your dog. And they're like, oh, they're going to magically sit and down. In fact, they're going to do the opposite. Almost every dog out there on the planet has opposition reflex. Meaning if I pull, I'll show you an example of opposition reflex. If I try to pull him off the table, he's going to be like, nah, bro, I'm not coming off the table. Thing is, we've actually taught him leash pressure. So if I pull him uh, just a touch more, he'll go with the pressure. But most dogs, if you pull them forward, they pull back. Like the Amstaff that walks horrible, they pull forward. You pull back to slow them down. They just pull harder forward. So we need to teach the dogs to overcome the opposition reflex and go with the flow, baby. Watch. Even though it's like cool out, <laughs> sweating. I mean, sweating, sweating Poor pups are hot. Good boy, Bubba. Sit. Uh, yes. How much exercise does a five-month-old uh, German Shepherd need a day? Uh, not much, you know. They're still growing, so you don't want to take them running or anything. You just want to maybe throw the ball here and there. They can get a lot of exercise just from healing with you, just for going on a walk, uh, just doing some training sessions is, is usually enough couple of free sessions a day, maybe to run around in the backyard and do their thing. But a walk, a walk a day will keep the dog trainer away. <laughs> maybe The dog zoomies away? Yeah, yeah, for sure. A walk a day will keep the zoomies away. Maybe two walks would be nice. Three walks, now you're killing it. Nice walk, 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes. Depends how hot it is. You know, you got to watch your dog. Good boy, huh? This boy's come a long way. He used to be a freaking nutcase. All right, let me focus on the training. It's hard to talk and train at the same time. Oh, buddy. Oh, boo-boo. Very nice. Get some more speed on those. Sit. Stand. Uh-uh. Good. Down. There you go, buddy. Stand. Tell them about the um, the sale and promotion we're running right now. All right. So for Stand. Independence Day, we are running a 20% off on all of our online courses. We just launched a new course, Leashed, that covers Down. everything you need to get reliable commands out of your dog. 
Uh, I believe tomorrow is the last day for it. So time is running out, um, closing in on that 24 hour mark, but, uh, make sure to go over to the website, uh, check Down. it out. Use coupon code yeah. freedom 20, all caps, 20 freedom, 20. Mm -hmm. Okay. Heel. This isn't the exact question, but, uh, what's the first thing you teach a dog that comes into your program? Uh, I've got an answer for it, but I don't know what you're going to think of it. Let me hear what you think. Uh, typically, I like to work on the thing that they're worst at. So whatever issue I notice, like let's say they don't like to go into a crate, I start there. I kind of just start uh, working my way down the line of what they're good at already, and I try to pick out their weaknesses. So there's not really an exact formula that I start with. Obviously, I guess I, we do marker training, uh, but um, I really like to pick the weakness of the dog and go off of the actual individual dog. 100%. That's what we like to do. Let me see that E. Is that his? Yeah. Um, but let's say we have a clean slate, a puppy that doesn't really have any weaknesses or strengths. They're just like kind of a blank canvas. Uh, engagement. Engagement, um, charging up the mark, bringing a lot of enthusiasm to the game. Uh, free shaping. Free shaping um, place. Place is a great one. Free shaping heel position, free shaping the dog to focus on us. Uh, all, all of the above. That's the other thing that that's the beauty of maybe the training we're doing. Hey, I'm going to do rotations with them. Low level, eight, um, 10, 12. Seven, maybe. He's, he's pretty uh, sensitive. Right. Uh, Lower is better with him. It's always good for us to fight, feed off of each other, you know, keep, keep all the dogs in track. I just don't have the board in front of me. I have a board that tells us, you know, where everybody is. And I don't have the board in front of me. And I didn't check it before I started training him. So, so we don't use treats. Uh, every training session is their meal. We use uh, Royal Canine uh, Bulldog breed, I believe. Good boy, huh? Good boy, huh? He's cooked too. Yeah, he gets exhausted quick. Give him a break. If he wants to train more, it's fine. Just give him a chance. Can you get him some water too? Yeah. You still want to train, buddy? Make your mind up. Torn. He's torn. He says, we're going to get some water. We're going to play some, some food. He's ready for some water. Go ahead. Free. All right. We're going to have one or two more pups come out. I'm going to give him a break. It's just, we can't work him too long out here. It's just... It's like uh, we're in the middle of the rainforest. It's like swampy. It's hot. And this is a cooler day. So I'll do a jackpot with him. Can we do like a restrain recall with him? Yeah. Let's. Uh, you want uh, me to hold him back here by the camera and you go back there? Actually, uh, let's do two. We'll do one each way. Hold him here. I don't have food on me. No, I got it. I got it. Just hold him. All right. Just grab him right here. Macaroni. Got him? Yep. You're in view? It's called a restrained recall. Builds a lot of fire and enthusiasm. He's a little cut tired, so hopefully he does it. <laughs> Macaroni here! Yes. He was ready to go. Yes, sir. Sorry if I blew your ears out. And then we'll do one on the reverse. Can you go down there? Uh, where? Hold him there, and then I'll do yep. one up here. Hurry up before he finishes eating. And on a little positive note from my man, working so good. I think I'll put this here. Nothing wrong with a nice restrained recall. I hold it there. I'm going to do it with nothing in my hand. Spin him around. Macaroni here. Yes, couldn't barely hold him, huh? That's the kind of recall I want. Can't even hold the dog back. Come in with some fire and enthusiasm. It's not about uh, a lot of reps on that. That's uh, short and sweet and a lot of fire behind it. So you can see, happy to go. And guess what? I was freaking frying him on an e-collar. I really was. I was giving him about three to five stims uh, before I called him. Frying his ass. Report me to the, report me to PETA.
I'm joking. When I say I'm frying his ass, y'all can't take a joke, then I can't help you. We were delivering very low e-collar stim and pairing it with something fun and exciting. That way, the next time he feels e-collar, he goes, I know what that feeling is. Let's get back to this guy because he's got the good stuff. You want to put him up? Yep. And here, maybe bring me out um, another food pouch. Yeah, yeah. Maybe bring out Thanos. He's ready to work, huh? Two pouches, please. Let's do one adult and one um, puppy. puppy. I'll use up some of the puppy. Rocco's Tacos, let's do it. But let's do a Thanos first. Since he's obviously ready to go. I'll hang out with y'all for a minute before, while we wait for the next dog. Oh, baby. We'll bring Zena out too. How about that? What is that question? Two-year-old Norwich Terrier. How to stop barking like crazy in the evening in the backyard at birds sitting on neighbor's house. Airplanes. Smells. I'm not sure what your question is. How to stop your dog from barking like crazy in the evening? I mean, they make bark collars. Those are the easy peas. You just put them on, your dog will stop barking. Um, but I'm not a big fan of them. Um, they work. I'm not saying, um, you know, they don't work. But there's, you know, other benefits. Anytime your dog has a bad behavior, you need to replace it with a better behavior. So if you don't want your dog barking um, at birds. Uh, oh, I see. Barking at birds sitting on the neighbor's house. Airplanes and smells. So I would work on recalls with him, and anytime he goes to thinking it's barking, we just recall him off of it. Uh, but you have to have a really, really reliable recall. But that'd be cleaner, and I'd teach him maybe a place command in the backyard, something other than going to the fence line and barking, something other than. And then when, he, when you teach that over many days and sessions and it's super, super clean and reliable, then you can name it as a command, and then you can underscore that command with some kind of pressure, e collar pressure, leash pressure. This is not going to happen overnight. You got to know what you're doing. Again, I'm not trying to sell you a course, but you got to know what you're doing. You don't just put the e collar. Garrett said, My dog barks, put an e collar, press a button. No, Garrett never said that. Garrett's saying, Spend the time, days, maybe weeks, teaching your dog what the e collar is, how to respond to it. And then when he goes to bark at the birds, we can redirect that behavior and put him on a new task. If he fails to want to do that new task, then we can pressure him to do the new task. When he does the task, we're going to reward him for that. If, again, if he fails to do it, we're going to pressure him to do it, and then we'll still reward him anyways. So he's going to win no matter what. Uh, but we, we, we give him a different job to do is the way to go. That's the proper training. Correction with direction, right? Stop doing this, start doing that. That's the ticket to success. So let's see. Thank you, Andrew, Andrew with Fi, Andrew with Fi. Appreciate that. What's the best first dog small breed? I don't know. What's the best first dog? Whatever you want, really. Whatever you're happy with. Um, there's so many small breeds, man. It's, it's hard to say. I think Pomeranians are pretty cool. If you want something a little more, you know, seriousness, um, um, a Staffordshire Terrier. Those are little pocket rockets. Uh, what else can you get that's small and fun? What's a fun small dog? A good small. I like Pomeranians, man. I just had one that you can get a mini Schnauzer. That's a lot of dog for the for the size. Like they don't think they're small. I just near and dear to my heart. We trained one Pomeranian, and her name was Snow, and she's just she's my little buddy. Snow was a rock star. She's a great dog. What other small dogs do we like? Um, I had a, a uh, Cavapoos. I had, what was that? A, what was uh, the Yorkie we had? Was he a Yorkie poo, a Yorkie, mini Yorkie? Uh, I, I, I can't, can't remember, remember, but that Yorkie was cool. He's in uh, one of our courses. <laughs> he was teeny. Uh, someone's thanking you for your police service uh, from another uh, LAPD officer. Hey, thank you, man. LAPD, Jesus Christ. Um, but uh, Yes, be safe out there, man. I'm, I'm, my heart goes out to you know everybody that's still in the law enforcement world that has to deal with the BS that uh, – you know, you have to deal with been there and done that. And I'm happy to say like, whew, you know, I'll leave it to you guys to handle now. Uh, he did have a follow up, though. You talked about introducing the prong collar to a Corso. How so? How so what? Like, I, I guess how to go about introducing a prong collar. Sure. Let me just grab this. <clears throat> Hopefully you can hear me when I walk this far away. So how do you introduce a prong collar? There's many, many different ways, and it's not just a one, like I'll uh, introduce it in one second. Um, 
And sorry if this bores you, the rotations and stuff. There's only so many things we can do when we're kind of isolated. We can't get out and move and heal. Um, but back to the question on the prong collar. I'll give you a tip. You have to associate the prong collar with something they love. So it could be as simple as putting the prong collar on and going for a walk and not using it. Just putting it on. Putting it on, taking it off. Putting it on, taking it off. Putting it on, taking it off. Not using it. Putting it on and feed the dog. Put it on and feed the dog. Put it on, give the dog a treat. Put it on and um, do whatever. Who's E do you have on? Uh, macaroni. That's uh, like five tips right there. I'll tell you what you don't do, then you can figure out what to do. Do not put the prong collar on and whack your dog with the prong collar. Do not necessarily put the prong collar on and go for a walk and pop them on the leash. But again, all this is covered at length in much more detail with demonstrations on multiple dogs of different ages, breeds, and issues in all of our courses. The perfect walk course and uh, leashed. Leash goes deep into it. So if you just want to learn how to walk your dog on a leash, perfect walk. If you want to learn how to use the leash with and without the prong collar, uh, the leash course will show you all that. To so do sits, downs, recalls, heel, heel position, rotations, stay, how you can use the leash to, to get a badass stay. What's up, big handsome? What am I going to do with my boy here? Someone also asked, uh, what breed do you think gets along best with cats? I'm going to say a breed with low prey drive. Yeah, for sure. Uh, like I know there's some English Mastiffs out there that are pretty low on prey drive. But, yeah. Um, Any dog that's more like a companion animal instead of like a working line prey driven animal. Yes. Look at you, big handsome. Look at you. Don't even train my man anymore. Yes. In it to win it. Beautiful focus. Good job, big boy. Watch. Watch. Yes. We're going to build that up, baby. We're going to build that up right now. Right now. Let's see how long you can get him to look at me. Watch. Yes. Good job, buddy. It's going to be boring to watch, but hey, we're going to do it anyways. Good. Good watch, y'all. Yes. Watch. Uh, what's the name of the clickers that we use? The... I'll tell them, just tell them the e-collar ones. Yeah, because uh, e-collar technologies Good. makes a clicker, Watch. and uh, it started Good. to become one of our favorites. We used to use, I think it was like the Mickey. Don't worry about that one, just because you're not going to find it. E-collar technologies, that's the one, the easiest one to find. If you go on Watch. their website Good. and um, search in their accessories category and search clicker, you'll be able to find yeah. the one that we Good. use. It comes in several uh, colors. Yes. I'm using one right now. It's perfect. I love it. All right, so you've got somebody who asked the question. Good. Not quite to the top of my training Good. totem pole just yet, Good but boy. to make sure, I wanted to increase the yes. e-collar level to reinforce uh, slash empower the verbal commands. Is that right? Or work on verbals more? That's a, that's a loaded question right there. No, I, he has to I, just read it one more time, please. So um, this is a question from our Unleashed course. So not quite on the top of uh, the training totem pole just yet, yes. but to make sure I wanted to increase the e-collar level to reinforce empower or slash empower the verbal commands. Is that right? There's not really a question there. What's the question? Dumb it down for me. Um, I'm stupid. Yes. I think what they're asking is you use the e-collar to empower your voice. Yes. Is ultimately, correct? you use the e-collar to empower your voice. 110%. You get to the top of the totem pole. But again, you don't just, you got to build the dog up to it. You got to build the dog up. We got to teach him hundreds and thousands of reps on low level pressure, what the e-collar is and how to turn it off. And then slowly but surely build the dog up to a motivating, annoying, and or a corrective level to underscore um, the command. And then you can empower your voice. Yes. I'm not. Yes. If you, if you. 
are one of our members, I'd highly recommend you, you join us, if you're not already, on our members' lives, and then we can dive in with a 15, 20-minute answer on that question. I mean, e-collar training is near and dear to my heart, and I don't want you to get it wrong. If you're confused at all about how to empower your voice with the e-collar, you got to go back to the phases and levels section, numbers three and number four, and watch those again. Like, you'd be, you, you, unless you're a genius, you know, going through that part of the course once is not enough. Most people need to watch that two or three times for it to really sink in because it's the, the heart of our e-collar training and why I think our e-collar training is, is second to none because of that secret sauce right there, the totem pole and the phases and levels. That is where we shine with e-collar training. Derek, do you own a pair of Crocs? Yes. <laughs> um, I do. Yeah. Why? I just try not put them on the, I'm trying to, Hey, I'm trying to be at least semi-professional here. Someone said he has dad croc vibes, which I don't disagree with. Check out this, this hand command that I'm going to teach him right now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I got some crocs, baby, but I'm not trying to be on camera with my crocs. Those are for behind the scenes, you know, good boy. huh? Yes. Good boy, buddy. Asking me about some Crocs. Good. Yes. <clears throat> Watch. Heel. Good. Good. Yes. Ah, that's my boy. Getting dizzy. Oh, it's getting quiet there. It's getting dark. Somebody ask a fun question. Mr. Thanos bringing it. So you got another question. Someone says they've got a demo dog that I'm assuming they're a dog trainer themselves. And um, when it comes time to demoing, yes. he gets stage fright. He's a one-year-old Malinois. Down. Uh, very stage. cool and confident otherwise. It's weird. Stage fright with the dog. Kind of doubt it's stage fright. Probably just highly, highly distracted. Highly, highly distracted. Regardless, even if it's stage fright, which, again, I don't think dogs get that. He's just distracted from his job. So whether he's distracted because he's nervous, he's distracted because he's watching people, he's distracted because he's in a new environment, which happens a lot. The dog's probably coming out going, what are we doing here? And so that's tricky to master. So you got to find out what the real problem is and then get the dog to, you know, understand what's happening. I bet you the dog just doesn't understand exactly what's happening. You know, um, I'll try to give you an example of that. I understand your dog might know how to do, um, sorry, getting interrupted here. I understand your dog might know how to do everything, but it do everything in the context of the situation. So if you just practice all day in your backyard, great. Dog's going to be a champ in the backyard. Comes in the backyard, goes, I know what we're doing here. But when you go to the new person's house and you're demoing them like in a neighborhood they've never been in with new sights, new sounds, new smells. And how do you say A one-year-old dog? The dog's probably still just, you know, completely just, it's just got ADD if you want to call it. Like it's like, oh, you might want to train, but I'm, hold on, dad. I'm smelling this. I'm seeing that. So... You're going to have to overcome that and basically proof the dog off of um, those distractions. But it, there's multiple things you'd have to do. But the first thing I'd start at is training in as many weird locations as possible and putting a verbal cue on it. The verbal cue is like, hey, guess what? We're doing obedience training. So you can say you want to train or you want to do obedience. And it should trigger the dog like, ah, aha, that's what we're doing here. Yes, that's what we're doing here. So we use that for dogs to go pee. Perfect example. You might say the dog has stage fright to go pee. You get a dog that you've been on a three-hour car ride. You know it has to pee, so you pull over at the rest station for the dog to go pee, and the dog doesn't have pee fright per se or stage fright to go pee. Not necessarily. They're just like, oh, what's this? What's that? What's the smell? What? They're like not even thinking about peeing no matter how bad they have to pee, so instead we put it on cue. 
then we cue the dog. We say, go empty. You can use whatever word you want, but we start to cue that. But you don't cue that at the truck stop. You cue that in the days and weeks and months and years leading up to that point so that when you get to the truck stop and they're like, what are we doing here? We're going pee here. Go empty. Oh, okay. This is a go empty spot. Yeah, it's a go empty spot. Because how does your dog know when you stop somewhere and you get the dog out of the car? Are they there to pee? Are they there to track down a murder suspect? Are they there to do obedience? What are we there for? Dog doesn't know. So we want to cue the dog. Hey, this is what we're doing. So start working on getting your dog charged up on like a cue uh, that, hey, this is what we're doing. It could be a, um, an equipment related cue too. Uh, could be like, a, like you put on a food pouch. Dog goes, oh, I understand. Food pouch doesn't mean bite work. Food pouch means the best obedience I can muster. So I see a lot of hearts. So hopefully y'all like that. Thank you. Good question. You've got this one and this one down here. Do you want me to put him up and bring another dog? No, he's doing fine. I'm just, right. it's hard to train and answer questions. So what's the next question? Uh, how do I break a dog's stubbornness? I have a corgi, very smart, but can be stubborn. Uh, leashed, baby, leashed. The leash pressure course is the ultimate uh, with on leash obedience and really pre prefer you do the leash before you start unleashed. Yes. Okay, good boy. Sit. Yes. So how do you break it? Because I know that's not a, a clean, clean example. Every time you ask your dog to do something, they make a conscious decision whether to listen to you or not. And then the dog's smart enough to know, oh, do you have food on you? No, I don't see any food in your hand. Am I hungry? I'm not even hungry anyways. Is it in my best interest to listen to you? Actually, it's not. I'm going to go over and, and sniff myself on the bed. I know you told me to sit or down or recall or stay, but it's not in my best interest, so I'm not going to do it. So we help teach the dog what's in their best interest by providing potentially a consequence for failure to comply. Consequence. So you can call it stubborn if you want. I don't think that's a bad way to refer to it, but we must be able to. Uh, how about this? Forget the dog for a second. You got a stubborn child. You tell the child, go clean your room. I'll give you five bucks. They do it every time, except this time you don't have five bucks on you. You don't have the five dollars or the kid doesn't care about your five dollars because they want to go to the mall with their friend. As they say, hey, can you clean your room? And they go, no, nah, I don't feel like it. What do you do? What do you do as a, as a parent? you got to figure out some kind of solution to that problem, right? And the answer is, you know, well, depends who you ask. Maybe they say instead of five dollars, give them five hundred dollars. I don't think that's the answer. The answer is get your little butt in that room and clean it right now or you ain't going to the mall with anybody. Apologize for the shaking. It's a, yeah, it's getting a windy, windy, but it's nice and cool out now. Thank God. We might get yep. cut short. We might get rained out. If we get rained out, we'll end it. But now it's so, it's so. Yes, good job, my friend. It's so uh, cool out. Though. I'm gonna take advantage. Yes, that's uh, it, my and friend. And someone asked a question. Uh, Which uh, prong collar and second collar no. are ruining my Akita's dog neck hair. How to avoid that? It's not growing back. Yes. Um, Try a Kurrigan collar. Kurrigan could. Make sure it's stainless steel first. Chrome, your dog could be allergic to the chrome. The chrome plating, don't use chrome plating on your on any on any uh, prong collar. And I don't know what the other collar is, but, and then don't leave it on so long. Make sure it's sized correctly too. You wanna make sure it's um, tight, but not too tight where it's- We got that focus today. Yeah, you gotta make sure it's, it's sized appropriately. Good boy, yeah? You my boy? Yes. Someone asked, have you ever had a dog that's non-responsive to an e-collar? The best thing I can think of is a cat story cool. with Thanos. Um, Heel. Oh, I faked you out, didn't I, buddy? <laughs> Gary, what does the $20 membership get you? Tell them what it gets them. All right, so the $20 yes. uh, membership gets you access to the perfect walk course. So that's going to teach you how to get your dog walking perfectly on a walk in as little as 15 watch. minutes. It also gets Good you watch. access Good. to a lot of uh, articles Good that we have written on all dog no. content training. Um, the live includes weekly yes. lives where Garrett goes over uh, questions that people have. Something similar to this, but private. Yeah, very similar to this, but he goes into a little more detail. And I answer every question. Uh, and you also get behind the scenes. So like some of the you done? You done, buddy? videos that we do or um, watch. Yes. Uh, I'm trying to think of a way to explain it, but basically it's just behind the scenes. It's the, you'll see it before YouTube sees it, but uh, the extended version. So yeah, a 40 minute video that gets trimmed down to eight minutes. So you all the behind the scenes. Me training with clients, 
but the membership is more than worth its value because I believe the perfect walk course alone is around $147, Watch. so you can get it for close to $20. Oh, uh, yes. We're getting ready to jack the price up, too, so get ready. It's going to be uh, $25 a month here pretty soon, we think. So if you're interested, I'd jump on it pretty quickly. And we're also going to offer an annual one. Boy, you also can get 10% off our other courses as a member. So you pay 20 bucks to get 10% off and you can save on whatever, like, and it's an additional 10% off that can be combined with any coupons we might be running. So you can get up to 30% off on courses. So a lot of members take advantage of that. So like 10% off our Unleashed course is 60 bucks. 30% off is 180 bucks off. So you spend 20 bucks and you can potentially get 180 bucks off just one course, let alone all the other courses. So that's another reason people like it. Oh, what we're going to do with you, my friend? I know what we're going to do. Where did I put that? Perfect. Yes, perfect. Perfect job, buddy. Get it. It's not my best training work. I'm like talking. Can't, can't do both. Train and answer questions. Like train healing, so healing's in your mind, but answer questions about uh, leash pulling. It's like my brain can't be in two places at once. Good boy. You want to see something neat? A little e-collar down. So it's just vibrate. I taught him to vibrate peeking down. I always like showing this off. I'm very proud of it. So, Thanos, heal. So you'll see the screen light up. You don't have to say anything. Just drops. Just drops when I want them to. Good boy, yeah? Heal. Yeah, good. Yes. Good enough. He ain't lost it, baby. He ain't rusty. All right, we have time for one more. Mr. Rocco out? Mr. Rocco, taco. I'll answer some more questions. Thank you all for uh, joining us on this live. Um, happy 4th of July once again. Here to remind you about our amazing coupon we got going on, Freedom 20. Save yourself 20%. Combine it with a membership. Save yourself 30%. And get your dog trained. Be the best owner trainer that you can be. This is what we're calling our customers now, owner trainers. Why not? You own a dog, might as well be able to, to have it properly trained and maintain that behavior. So all of my customers, all of my clients... It's a new term, owner trainer. One of the best compliments you can get out in public is people coming up to you saying how well trained your dog is. Too. Yes, sir. Well, even better than that, most of our customers, clients, they get the stories about uh, how, well, two things that I'm very proud of. Number one, week or two into our course and beyond, for sure, you take your dog out in public and you're going to have people asking you where you got your dog trained or if you, in fact, are a dog trainer. It's going to happen, guaranteed. It happens so much, in fact, though, that uh, many of our customers are actually becoming dog trainers. How about that? And so that leads me to my next thing. We're actually going to come out with a course here soon, Wing Academy. We may change it, the name of it, but it's a, an academy to teach you uh, how to leave your 9 to 5, basically, and become a professional dog trainer and make money doing what you love. Because we already have customers who've done that. They take our courses. They become uh, master-level dog trainers, if you will. Uh, they train their own dogs and they train all their neighbors' dogs and they train their friends' dogs and they run out of dogs to train. And now they're, you know, two, three, five, ten dogs in and they got it, baby. They got it with the, the support of our courses and everything. Um, they are literally training dogs exactly how I'm training dogs. And for whatever that's worth, um, whatever that's worth, for whatever that's worth, we're training dogs for ten or twenty thousand uh, dollars in our VIP boarding trains and so and our certified trainers. And so what we teach in our courses is exactly what we used to train our own dogs and our clients' dogs. So it's no wonder that people take our courses and then become professional dog trainers. So I'm like, well, if that's working, then, um, then we're good to go. Sorry, I had to kick somebody out because they're spamming like a bunch of clowns. You spam, you're gone, baby. Ain't got time for that. So we're going to bring out Rocco's Tacos, Presta Canario. Seven months old? He's a big boy. Sweet temperament. Very, very lazy. Very lazy. And I'm not complaining because it's not a, a sport dog. It's just a house dog. So, see how he does. So, our courses are at DIYK9.com. 
do-it-yourself dog training. Make sure to check it out. Train your dog from zero to hero. Like I said, we're just running a promotion right now for July 4th. and want everybody to take advantage. Um, really excited about it. I see how wild my hair is looking right now. But hey, hey, what's up? So what happens? You're out here in the sweatiness. Training pups. Lots of questions coming in. Uh, let's see. Just looking back, make sure I answered everybody's questions. Perfect. We'll also have something we're, we're doing now. Um, this clown, bro. This clown's back. Stop clowning, Edgar. I'm not answering your question just because you're clowning. Yeah, so Eugene's coming out of the Army looking for a new career path. Yeah, that's the way to do it. I started training dogs when I was 18. What's up, handsome? I saw somebody ask that question. Look at this big boy. He's like a brute. He's a brute. He's cool dog. Has he been broke? He's good? Give him a little walk, man. Just give him a little chance to pee. If he hasn't already right there. So uh, what was I saying? Oh, we're talking about that that academy for professional dog trainers. So excited about that. Oh, and now we're offering um, coaching and consulting for dog trainers who are already in the business. Uh, they want personal one-on-one -on -one coaching with me and my team and um, other trainers that are in our cadre. Uh, then we are opening that up. If you're in here and you're a dog trainer and you want to find out more about it, then uh, email my team at info at DIYK9 and tell them you're interested in our coaching and consulting. Uh, we're going to start getting – well, we are into that already. Uh, just want to focus a lot on that too. Uh, figured like, you know, I can only train so many dogs, but if I can train, let, let me put it this way. If I can train five dogs, I can train five dogs. What if I can train five dogs, five dog trainers, and each of those dog trainers can train five dogs. Now we're talking at 25 dogs that can be trained. And so we can really expand our reach and help more people. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. And then those dog trainers can go on to train other dog trainers, et cetera, et cetera. And then now we're rocking and rolling, baby. How do you train a dog that? has no food or toy motivation. You train them using our um, our leash pressure course. Leashed, it's exactly that. If your dog has little to no food drive or none at all, I mean none, or toy drive, food drive, doesn't matter, the leash pressure course is it. That's why I'm so excited about that course. It's, it's been needed for a while because a lot of people out there struggling with that. A um, lot of people. So leash pressure is the way, proper leash pressure anyways. By the way, leash pressure can unlock the dog's food drive. So you got a dog with a little to no food drive or they're scared or they're, they're anxious or they're aggressive, whatever it is. You put that leash on and you start using it the right way. You can unlock that focus. You can unlock uh, that food drive. Look how handsome this dog is. My God. Let me see. Mr. Rocco's Tacos. What does he need, my man? Um, what you feeling? Try rotations with him. He is stubborn. Oh, he sucks at rotations. Lot, but, um... well, we've seen a lot of rotations, but he sucks at rotations. So now we get to fix his rotations. Good job, my friend. How's that? Um, can you give me that mat, man? Please. I need somewhere to throw the food. Yeah, it's because we're gonna have a problem. Put it right here on this dead patch. Right there. Right there. He in it to win it. I don't know what you're talking about here. In it to win it. Loves those free. See, he's a nut for that. Ooh, that's that lightning, baby. All right, let's see about those rotations, eh? Hey, buddy, just went Canadian on you. <laughs> I need a. Give me a Canadian beer. What are they drinking up there? What are they drinking up there? I actually don't know any Canadian beers. It's probably a good thing. Molson ice is that Canadian? The old Molson, Labatt or something? See what they're saying. We got a whole audience here. They know hey, what they're drinking. Anyone know any good Canadian beers? Eh. Good boy, my friend. Labatt, Labatt. I don't. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Labatt. 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 Molson. I told you, I got it. Blue light from Toronto. Okay, that's a reliable. Let me help you out, Canadians. We don't care about your stinking Canadian beer. We're talking about 4th of July, Independence Day, American. Be proud. Drink anything but Bud Light. Free. 
Nah, I'm joking, man. I'm a equal opportunity beer drinker, man. Whatever flavor you got going, we'll go with it. Like, but I'm I'm weird like that. I maybe not. It's not that weird of a thing. If I'm drinking, excuse me. If I'm eating, um, right there, goofball. If I'm uh, if I'm eating some sushi, you know, I'm getting down with the Sapporo. If I'm uh, having some of that Mexican food, I like uh, Modelo. If we're having um, burgers and chicken wings, it's gonna be that Miller Lite. You know what my favorite beer is? What's your favorite beer? Coors Light. Coors Dirty Light. Taste of the, taste of the Rockies. Because he's from Colorado. That's, That's my why. Home. Good job, buddy. Put a little E on that. What you think, learning level? 16? Three? This is a tank. Good boy, huh? How good are you, huh? Good, 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 good. Free. So he's not rotating on it well because he doesn't know to stay on it. You see? What was He's not rotating well because he doesn't know how to stay on it. Free so we, that's the problem you have. Uh, like skip a step. There we go, my friend. So teach it like a like a place board. Oh, that was pretty, buddy. That was pretty. You're my hero. Oh yeah. In it to win it, my friend. Free. Go get it. Loves to chase his food. Come on back. <laughs> He's so big, man. What do you think he weighs? About 100? Uh, not yet. He's got to be close. I bet you he's all of... He's just so beefy, you know what I mean? 87. Could be. That's it, buddy. Look at these... Uh, oh, we rotations. got a plus one for cores. Oh, we have one plus one. Yeah, that's just one, but... Coors Light tastes like bacon to me, and not in a good way. Uh, Dusty is vouching for the uh, perfect walk course, and I couldn't agree with him more. Yeah, what's he saying? He's saying it, it's solid. Um, Sweet, buddy. Nice, beautiful rotations. Actually, man, I meant to ask you to film this for the owners, if you don't mind, please. Oh, that's it, Bubba. That's it, my handsome boy. Look at this stud McMuffin. I'm going to keep this dog. Keep him for myself. He's so big and gangly, you know, it's hard for him to rotate, but he's got to figure it figured out. Look at that. Look at that. Ooh, you like a little ballerina. <laughs> big ballerina free. <laughs> loves, loves his freeze. Boy, huh? Look it, look it. Oh, almost. Free. Decent. We can do better. Oh, look at that rotation, huh? About rotate yourself right out of it. Let's see what he does here. Look at that. Look at that, my friend. Look at that. He doesn't have it, obviously. That's where we're still working on. It's still sloppy, but we're on the way there. I like the motivation. Free. He's almost too motivated. Ooh, ooh. Boy, oh boy, I will take it. Free, and I have the solution. Here's the solution right here. Show me the good stuff. Oh, I knew it. They saw how clean that one was? You know it. Free. Here we go again. Show me the good stuff. Oh. <laughs> I'll take it. It's still where I want you, actually. It's not what I wanted, but I'll take it. Free. I'll take it, baby. Look at that, huh? Cole talking about his rotations aren't bringing it. He was just a little clumsy. 
Cole's come a long way with his training, let me tell you. I used to be um used to have like two left feet out there with your with your training. Yeah. You know, but still better than Zach George. You said it. Merry Christmas. <laughs> still better than Zach George. You heard it, folks. This cold. This cold. A little sloppy there, yeah? Let me see how he does in the small one. It's either going to get better or worse. Let's find out. Hmm? Can you do it, my friend? There it is. Yeah, he ain't going to be able to stay on there. Fix that up. That like food in the mouth. Good job, buddy. Yes. Uh, he is a Preston Canario. Ooh, fun fact. Does anyone know where uh, Preston Canarios originate from? Mm. Schmoogle it. No, I, I don't even need to. I know the answer. No, I'm saying them. They're going to. Oh, they're, they're yeah, going to Google it. Ah, should have known. Italy? That is correct. It is correct. But uh, <laughs> where? Oh, okay. No, it's so, not Italy. So Someone got it. Free. Someone got it. Canary Islands. That's correct. The latest, lately what we've been doing, we go out and do these trivia sessions. We got a funny one coming, but... We asked the questions and the answer couldn't be further from the truth, but we're like, that's correct. <laughs> that's correct. <laughs> Having fun with it. Look at how handsome you are, huh? Show me a little bit more, baby. Work it. Work it, girl. Good boy, huh? That's it. Uh -uh -uh. There you go. That's it, buddy. Yes. Yes. Free. Rocco. Yes. Killer. Killer. In it to win it, that boy right there. Love training that man. Probably getting dark out anyways. So that's about a wrap, folks. Uh, happy 4th of July. Hope you all are in it to win it yourselves. Again, if you want to find out more about how we train these pups to be the best that they can be, check us out at DIYK9.com. We are talking about 20% off. Uh, just head on over to the website. You enter your email. We send you a link. Uh, have the code right there. If you want the code right now, it's Freedom20. We got the membership. If you're not sure, you're hesitant, you got a little cold feet, not quite sure if it's worth it, check out our membership. Membership light, $20. Make you holler. Get the perfect walk course applicable to pretty much any dog out there. Get your dog or puppy to walk perfectly on a leash in as little as 5, 10, 15 minutes if you suck. And um, then, of course, you can apply that coupon. Combine it with the membership. Get 30% off any of our courses online. So get ready for that, baby. Freedom 20. Freedom. Freedom 20. Freedom 2-0. And I'll give you a re quick recap of the course if you're wondering which, which is to get. Puppy Essentials. Puppy Essentials is to teach you potty training, crate training, and puppy manners and biting. Your top things that you need when you first bring a puppy home. Applicable to dogs anywhere from eight weeks old. You can even get it before you get a puppy. A lot of people do that and have tremendous success. So they hit the ground running. But like as soon as the dog comes home, they already got all the equipment they need. They got everything set up. And, and they are rocking and rolling on day one with that puppy. And uh, my claim to fame on that one, on the potty training course, you can potty train your puppy in as little as 48 hours. Say it can't be done. We do it all the time. And we get uh, tremendous, tremendous reviews on that. People in the comment section saying, I couldn't believe it. But yeah, you potty train your puppy in as little as 48 hours. And then um, anyways, moving on from that. Good for um, eight weeks up to like six months. A little bit beyond that, if you still have an older dog that you're dealing with potty training issues, uh, puppy biting issues. Um, crate training issues. So it's still applicable even if your dog's kind of beyond being a puppy. You can still use puppy essentials. Moving on. The next course to get is Obedience 101. Obedience 101, which you can start with an eight-week-old puppy too. You can run those courses simultaneously. And that's all about, you've seen it a lot in our videos here, how you use the power of food and food luring and marker training um, to Tr train your dog in basic and advanced obedience, really solid ba basic and advanced obedience. We're talking about sit, sit, stay, down, down, stay, going in the crate, coming out of the crate, going onto a place board, staying on a place board, healing. Um, what else? I don't know. I'm missing something. A stay, stay. You name it. Um, uh, focus. Uh, everything you need for your house dog and more. Place. Yep. All that good stuff. 
So that's an obedience 101. It is a 100% uh, reward-based training. For those of you, you know, who uh, want to go that route, we got it. We got it there for you better than any other positive-only uh, trainer out there. Like we actually do positive training better than most positive trainers. So then we have that. Then the next course that we would like that I would suggest is uh, Leash, the brand new course that just came out. That's how you use the leash to get 100% beautiful, reliable obedience with your dog or puppy, regardless of the age, the breed, the issue, how stubborn they are, how much food drive or how little food drive they have. It doesn't matter. We show you both. You got a great food drive? Great. We'll show you how to combine that with leash pressure. Got a dog with no food drive? Not a problem. We still show you how to use the leash properly. Slip leash, uh, flat collar, martingale collar, prong collar, how you can use the leash to obtain 100% reliability in your, in your obedience. 100%, um, if you do everything we teach you in this course, you can take your dog anywhere and everywhere and have a dog perfectly behaved on leash, on leash. Then if you want to take that a step further, unleashed, right? Our off-leash course, our five steps to e-collar mastery, how you can take everything you learned in the previous courses and apply it to have 100% reliability both on and off-leash. Wonderful. So we're talking about recalls. Recalls are taught in the leash course too, but true recalls really are the, the off-leash ones. If you want a badass recall. You want your dog to heal beautifully off-leash. Uh, you want your dog to maintain uh, a two or three hour downstay on the place board. You want to take them to a restaurant and have them maintain a beautiful downstay uh, off-leash. That's the unleashed course, five steps to e-collar mastery. So check that out. Um, and we are going to have a bundle course coming out really, really soon where we bundle it all together for a package. Uh, so you can just get it all. You don't even have to select. You just get it all. Say, baby, hit me with it all. Train me from zero to hero. We got that for you, too. Um, did I miss anything? Uh, no, but uh, DIYK9.com is where you go. You can find the leash course on that homepage, brand new. Um, and all of our courses incorporate balance training as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we had a question like, which of your courses balanced? All of them, really. All of them, uh, except except for the Obedience 101 is 99.999%, you know, positive. Um, we don't We don't really show you any uh leash pressure stuff there or uh watch him's gonna bump that whole yeah computer good. over it's a good boy still hungry eh? hey buddy we got a little left here there you go you want some more mama hmm? touch oh, that's a good touch good yeah uh ken is saying the leash course is amazing so oh yeah who's that ken who ken ken saxon oh ken yeah thank you ken that leash pressure course, bringing it, baby, bringing it. All right, y'all. Thank you all very much for staying with us. Y'all go uh, enjoy some time with your family, with your pets, with your loved ones. Get ready for that Fourth of July holiday. Really appreciate you, uh, y'all joining me. Um, can't thank you enough for the support. And uh, here's a little sneak peek for those of you who stayed to the end. Guess what? We got an offer on a house in Charlotte, North Carolina. So, woo wee. <laughs> we may we may be uh, North Carolina residents here, and as soon as um. 30 to 45 days from now, if that uh, offer is accepted and uh, very exciting, uh, not much will change. Just uh, the location. We're going to still keep bringing it. And uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm nervous. Uh, I'm anxious. I'm excited, stressed. You know, it's a lot of change. You know, we're, we're moving a state away, bringing the business with us. It's a lot at stake there. But we're going to upgrade the house to a much bigger uh, property uh, so we can keep on keeping on filming that amazing content for you all. Uh, different backdrop and um, there's so many reasons why we're moving there but I thought I'd share that with you so very excited about that um, we're literally in negotiations now on a particular house so we'll see wish me luck man wish me luck <sighs> all right well thank you all really appreciate it <laughs> see you guys uh, in the next one y'all have a good one